Hi, this is uh, Sadiq here, uh, just with a quick uh, few minutes uh, video and tutorial on using Affinity Photo. Now, this particular one is simply replacing the background uh, of a subject. In this case, we have a bird in flight and we just want to have a background that's um, a little bit more blurred than that one. So it's not distracting from the foreground, but also it could be a totally different background. So that's the starting image that you see on screen. And what we want to do is to get to uh, that image. And that is made up of this image and this background. Okay, so that's the starting image. And I'm just gonna take you through step by step on how to do that. And the key here we, with all software and affinity photo is no different. The key here is um, the original image, obviously the selection of your subject. So selecting it carefully is very important and refining that selection. And then um, the replacement background that you want. And then obviously any further editing that you want to do once those two elements have been combined. So we'll start from uh, from scratch then. So if we go to um, file and uh, now I'm just going to shut this down. Sorry. So we're not uh, we haven't got these images here. OK, so I've already saved that, so we don't need to uh, worry about that. So we're starting with uh, Affinity Photo with nothing on it. And we just go to open those images, first of all. So because I'd already recently opened them, so they're in the recents, but obviously you just go to open and find wherever the images are. So first of all, that's the first image uh, on its own. On the right hand side, we can see the layers. So just that um, base image layer and then file and open again and again I'm going to the recents because that's where my images are uh, it's quicker that way and then the background so we now have two files if you look at the top there is the original there is the background so they're on two separate files and we obviously want to one of the ways to do is to take this background and put it on that file that editing working progress and the quickest way to do that, there's more than one way. The quickest way to do that is make sure that layer selected and just do control and C. So you're copying it to the paint onto the clipboard back onto that image and then control and V. So that's now pasted it. You can see there's two layers there now, uh, the original background and the, the replacement background. What you want to make sure is that that replacement background, because it is the background, you put it underneath that layer. So you either move the bottom layer upwards or the top layer downwards, um, as long as this layer is at the top. So what, because we're going to be editing this and selecting this. So we want the selection tool to select out the subject. And of course there are some, and one of the reasons this image is particularly useful to, as an example, the bird you can clearly see has got something in its uh, claws, in its beak, and there's lots of bits of strands of grass um, and or uh, falling away, even one or two rogue bits here. So we want to try and select all of those so that it looks authentic. And it's quite easy in Affinity Photo because we've got this on the left hand side, the selection brush tool. Uh, and if you watched the, one of the previous videos, it um, works very well. You just loosely uh, selected um, uh, the object just by don't worry about refining the edges just yet we can do that later and all I'm doing is in a sense painting with it using my mouse but you can use a trackpad you can use a tablet whatever it is or a pencil whatever it is that you're using with your computer I'm on a Mac but it'll be very similar of course on a PC don't worry about these strands just yet so just reduce the size of the brush always zoom in make sure your affinity photo is set to zoom in using the scroll wheel on your mouse if you have a, a scroll wheel on your mouse uh, i know some mice like the apple mouse doesn't have that but so don't worry about that we can refine that okay once that's done then obviously we want to refine that selection and the good thing within Affinity Photo, I'm just going around and just making sure that some of the obvious parts are selected like that, is that we want to refine that selection. 
So I'm just going to move that up there and again use the selection brush like that. And what we want to do is click on the top here. These are the context sensitive options for that particular tool, which is the selection brush. And we want to refine it. It puts a mat or a mask. The red is what we're going to be cutting away, so to speak. Now, the quickest way to do this is to use your brush and just go around the edges a little bit at a time. And what that does, it refines the selection to make sure that everything is, is selected as the foreground or the background. Now, it won't work perfectly the first time, but bear with it and I'll show you what to do. So I'm just going round. I can see already that it's not going to select the edges. And this is obviously a challenging subject because we've got feathers, we've got grass, we've got fine edges. Uh, and the key, of course, is to do that correctly. Now, naturally, I'd want you to take a bit more time in doing that. Uh, but, but what I want you to do is to make sure that selection is good. Okay, so I'm just going through a little bit and making sure that I've selected the feathers really well. One other thing you can do under the refined selection is to say what's the background and what's the foreground. So if we emphasize that that indeed between the wings, between the feathers is the background, it will refine that. So that's another way of doing it. So I'm going to just try doing that just for speed in this case. I mean, I could have had this selected well in advance and just shown you how to do the replacement, but I think this is key. It's worth going over this again. And once you've done that, then you can do the um, a refined brush and it will do it quite well. There you go. And it's actually selecting the individual strands of the feathers really quite well because it has a good guide now that last one didn't work so well so let's just go back on the history palette we can do that just go back a step so just take your time and go around and select all of that And while you're here, it's worth going to foreground because when you then have your brush on foreground, you just paint on the image, the foreground image, and any pixels that it's missed, it will fill those in. So it's really a combination of foreground, background. So you're telling the software that this is the foreground and this is the background, and it will obviously refine that quite well now there it's selected a little bit too much of the background so I'm just gonna go that's the background there we go go back to foreground and just make sure don't go right up to the edge of the image go near to the edge that's the key to it okay going near to the edge So foreground, so up here, it's not quite selected it well on the head. And obviously you can zoom in to get a better look. And once it's, you get the hang of the tool, you'll be able to select it. And this is key, of course, is selecting this foreground. We mustn't miss this area here, because that is the background as well. So we'll come back to that. There's a couple of areas like that, which we need to do. So I'm going to background again and just saying those pixels there sh should be background and it's done that quite well. Um, foreground, so I'm just going to paint over these feathers here with the, with the foreground brush. So the brush acts as a refining the matte edge 
mask edge rather i tend to say mat but mask or emphasizing what's foreground and what's background so you've got it's it has multiple functions okay i think that's pretty good there okay now see that background i went over too close to the edge bring that up maybe a bit more better okay down to here oops sorry that's that's wrong just go back and we'll go to uh, foreground that's right see how it's on the background it's only because I'm rushing it a little bit so I don't want you to rush that so we're nearly there now right now background tell it what's the background now we're going to refine this selection in a minute don't worry too much about and not and it's key to keep changing the size of your brush relative to your image that you're painting over so now i want to do matte so what i want what i'm doing here is refining the edge of that selection and it should do it quite well there you go okay it hasn't quite done it there but we'll do have a look at that in a minute so it's background that's background that's background and reduce the size of the brush that's background there we go that's background that's foreground that's foreground okay now see these strands here while we're here we can say matte because we want to refine the selection and it will pick that up if you just paint over it and make sure you include a little bit of the background okay so while we're here let's do these strands as well down here so it picks those up there we go picks that up there we go so what we're basically telling the software is these are also part of the foreground that we want to put a new background behind okay now obviously I could change the size of the brush a little bit and that would speed things up a bit so really the size of the brush can speed things up but also can lead to some errors so it's a question of a trade-off but you know if you don't quite get it then just go back one step and do it again center it again uh, go down we're nearly there in the selection and the rest of it is very straightforward just a couple of steps just do each one of these at a time and some of them might not be strands but if they are it should pick it up and this will all of this of course will help to sell the image that what's in the foreground what's in the background okay that's better center that again now down here i think we did that yes we did this here so just make sure we've got those so round here is is key so take your time make sure you get all these foreground strands
Right, here, we said we, we must exclude that. So uh, when we go back to the selection brush, so we need to say that is the background. So go to background, reduce the size of the brush, and just paint a little bit, and it should start to select that area. Don't go right to the edge. Do it slowly. You can see now it's picking it up. If it doesn't, if it just picks up part of the foreground, then go to the foreground brush and just paint on the foreground, and that will do it. There are other ways of doing this, of course. So what else do we have? There's a section there between the wings. That is the background as well. So click on background. Change the size of the brush. Again, don't do too much. Just do a little bit at a time. Okay, there, that's the background. Just make sure that we tell it that's the background. That's background. So as I said at the beginning, the selection is the critical part. So yes, I'm taking a long time on this, but that really helps to sell. I'm now doing the foreground. When you do replace part of an image or the whole background, does make a big difference so even though I'm rushing it a bit it's still worth going through and doing it well okay we're pretty much there now we've done the, oh no there's, there's there's quite a bit down here so down here we need to refine that there so go back to Matt and we want to refine that selection that's better and refine that selection. Uh, that's actually foreground. Uh, that's actually foreground there. And uh, that's background. Can you see how fiddly this particular image is? But it gives you a good example um, to to practice this technique on foreground. right okay we're gonna go with that oh no up here that's foreground make sure it's on foreground we need to paint these feathers in don't we in luck so you don't need to go right to the edge just enough so that it picks up those feather pixels the foreground object pixels sorry and then it will click into place and then just refine it with the background version of the brush and it will push that mask to the edge as near as it can okay let's just go back to full screen okay right once we've selected the foreground with all the little bits and pieces of course that's key this is another nice feature of affinity photo yes you could just apply that selection but to speed things up in fact you got another couple of outputs which are useful we can either just have a mask selected from our selection created from our selection a new layer which is not what we're going to use or a new layer with mask now this will I'll show you both the new layer with mask let's show you that 
and then apply and you just look up at here where the layers is what we get once we click apply it'll just take a few seconds for the computer to obviously apply that now you can see that that was our original there we applied a mask we selected the foreground and if we remove our original image or disable that layer you can see that it obviously it displays the background layer straight away so that's all done okay so that's one way of doing it so I'm just going to go back to our selection okay so we're back at the selection click on refine again and that gives you the option to save it in a different way now this time we don't want to do layer with mask but just new layer okay sorry not new layer new just a mask so click on apply and you can see there now it just gives you a new layer with a mask and because your backgrounds already there your replacement background it's it cuts out one step so either way it creates the the uh, the background for you once you've done that then you want to combine these layers so just go to uh, layer and merge down and what it does is merges those so you've got your base image now with your background replaced and obviously if your selection is really good that'll give you the um, ideal output next thing I think is always worth doing is to add an adjustment to it so if we just say uh, add an, a, a, um, a no we're not actually not going to add an adjustment just yet what we're going to do is just duplicate that layer so if you duplicate the layer and then just change the blend mode from normal and as you go down you'll see one that actually gives the image a bit more punch sorry not that not color dodge that one overlay is good soft light is good that one's quite hard the hard light so you just choose the one so if we say overlay you can see that's a before and after so it just adds a bit more punch to the image okay and then of course at the end of that uh, if you want to make any other adjustments to exposure maybe put a vignette around it that's entirely up to you uh, if once you've done that of course you've got to save it and it, uh, remember in infinity photo it's not simply save or save as because that saves it as a proprietary file format and it's better practice to click on export and then you've got the choice jpeg png gif uh, psd pdf um or or indeed a number of other options so we just want it as a jpeg here and you can choose what file size you want bring let's just bring this down so that it's a reasonable size three four megabytes uh, if you're going to email it but of course if you're going to save it and it's going to be your main image then uh, you can have it as large as you like okay and then just click uh, export there and that then will prompt you to give it a name obviously give it the appropriate name um quite new background test or what and, and put it in the place that you want it to go and save it and that's it use the same technique for a number of options um for replacing the background now clearly you need to take time to select an image same tools but select that image carefully um, this is a difficult image to do, but of course, uh, it can be done uh, with a bit of time. I hope that's useful. Thank you very much.